has been hell for one of us. So it's not so it's And I will subscribe to the hell. Um, it's, that's such, it's such a hard question. Um, I'm trying to I was, I suffered very much from that anxiety and being not, not nervous about how people see like, like the image that I put across so if I was to offend someone it would really get to me. I would describe my issues with mental health um, being anxiety uh, and panic attacks and yeah things like that. So basically and the, 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 my main thing I know is money with help and it was quite a significant thing was uh, I realised that I was having suicidal thoughts not, not the suicidal thoughts where I was planning on doing it. It was more like where I was having anxiety and I would be anxious. The thoughts would pop in my head of saying, where, oh yeah, you could do this. And I'd be like, like you could do it, but I didn't. I was like, well, that would scare me even having those thoughts. And then, and then it would, that was happening every so often. And then one day I realised what we really actually wore and what, why I was thinking like that. And I basically just lost it. Like, it just made it ten times worse. It just felt like I could break it out. And then, uh, yeah, I just rang my mum, rang my girlfriend, and just realised I needed help. Um, one of the main, I suppose, panic attacks that actually affected me, which led me to go and seek help, was I was working at a chocolate factory at the time, and I was just worrying about what people were doing whilst I was there, about how everything was going to pan out within like my life, am I going into the right way, because there was a lot of time to think like because if I was doing the same monotonous thing over and over and it was just crippling the worry and like just the thoughts that you have was fully crippling to the fact that I, I couldn't do the same monotonous job that I was doing for the whole day because of it the work that I was doing I was doing over and over and over again so it was really easy to do. I could do it with my eyes closed, the way I was doing it, but just because of I was so scared and so worried about like thoughts that were going through my head, which were completely irrational, I couldn't do that simple work just because of it was like something in my head was just taking over all my like thought processes. So one way I feel like I have gotten to the path of beating the anxiety that I had is through music so I write songs and it's an escape from like some of the feelings and worries you have and you can even put them worry put the worries in a song and then you get the emotions that other people have so if someone connects to that song you realize that it isn't just in your head it's a real life worry that real life people have What made, what made me realise about it, like you say, is like you never think they're going to get out or anything like that. It's where people go on about, like, most of you growing up is like, yeah, be strong, be a strong person, like, get through it. And I never really knew what that meant because I never had problems, so I never really, like... Obviously, you could say strong saying be a strong human being, like, mostly, but not on that subject. But saying, like, getting through things, I never understood it until I went through my depression and anxiety. And then I remember just thinking about it one day, saying, this is what people mean, this is what, when you have your problems, it's either it can beat you, or you can beat it, basically, and you can overcome it. And I really feel that that really helps me as well, because I realise I either have to stand up or be a little melon. <laughs> so the first step, I think, and it's one of always the easiest, is basically telling your mum. 
which are telling any family member who you feel the closest to. I feel like that was the easiest thing to do and as, as a loving mother, she literally made me come home straight away. She took me to the doctors. Um, basically, I've been to the doctors a few times, but it was just mostly trying to get a bit of help, but like more doing the meditation way, the exercising way. And she just told me basically that like, it wasn't working and that maybe I should try therapy or, or medication. So I tried both, um, but I wasn't able to do the therapy at home, so I had to come back up to London and do it. So I basically came up, um, rang the rang the um, organisation that do it, called ICO, and yeah, got a counsellor, the woman um, ringing me up every week. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to do one-to-one -one meetings, but we did phone calls every week. And um, yeah, they... They they were all right. They were they were good. I feel like if they were more face to face, um, it would have been a lot more helpful. But over the phone, I don't know. It's probably different for a lot of people. But over the phone, it just didn't really work for me. But and there's a program that they have what you can log into, which has like modules that you follow, like challenging thoughts and like understanding your thoughts and stuff like that. And um, they were quite helpful. But I feel. It's, it was just, I don't know, it just, it didn't, it wasn't always helpful because for a person who has anxiety and depression, you're not always motivated to do something and to want to log in and do an online course for your health is not something you technically you really want to do. So it was quite difficult, but at the same time, I feel like a little bit of it did help and maybe for someone else it would really help, but all in all, I don't think it did that much. See, that's why the CBT was good because um, it has loads of um, examples of different ways of thinking. So like like people do where they think, what if, what if, that is like a key word in CBT that they say is like, um, I think it's black and white. It's either one can happen or the other. You don't think of what anything else could happen. And that, that I'm pretty sure that's what the example is. And that is probably, the, I think, one of the main examples people have with anxiety is what if this, what if this, they try to predict the future and it's it's not great, but having CBT and then basically explaining to you what it is and why you do it is quite beneficial. So, I mean, I feel, I honestly feel for some people, like, when I hear about them or if I ever think about people having, like, mental health issues and they've got no one, like, mental health makes you feel like you're, like, so alone in the world and then actually turning around and realising you are alone must be like one of the worst things ever. I could not imagine it. My girlfriend always says to me like, um, I always think of the past, I'm always like, oh, but in the past I didn't have this, like, and I always say to myself, I was happy, I was like, good, I was fine, like, why did it all change? And my girlfriend always says to me like, you shouldn't live in the past, like, that happened. And it's part of like being strong, it's like, you've got to get over it and you've got to look towards the future. And I do really agree with that. And I, do you think it's right? I would describe a panic attack as the scariest thing <laughs> that could happen to someone. Um, you can't you can't describe it. It's such it's such an overwhelming feeling. Um, yeah, I don't know. The simplest way that I could describe it would be like it's literally like a wave coming over your body and you f physically feel like you're drowning. Like you, you can't breathe, you, like your chest feels heavy. You, you can't control the rate of your heart, like your heart's beating so fast. Your fingers go numb. Like you can't, you just can't think straight. There's nothing to like rationalize how you're feeling. It's, it's so incredibly overwhelming. Um, and very, very scary. <laughs> I'd get myself out of a panic attack um, in lo lots of different ways. Uh, again, it all depends on kind of where you are, what's caused the anxiety and how you're feeling because e every panic attack can feel completely different. I used to find it much, much harder um, it's really difficult and there, there were little things that I was taught uh, breathing techniques different ways of thinking 
uh, stuff like that. At the time, I didn't really feel like it helped. I was I kind of managing it okay on my own anyway. It was just kind of one of those things I was just getting through day to day. So I kind of ignored the help that I was getting. Um, about two or three years later, so about two years ago, I had an absolute breakdown. It was like the scariest time of my life, really. Um, my anxiety hadn't even been that bad leading up to it and I just woke up when one morning and I was having troubles at work and stuff like that and I honestly <laughs> it sounds dramatic but I thought I was gonna die um I w w was running in and out of the bathroom because I just kept thinking that I was gonna be sick I was never sick um I, I couldn't think I, I had no idea what was happening to me um so after that I, I did start speaking to my doctor and I got counselling again um, and after that I tried lots and lots of different types of counselling um, I saw a counsellor who wanted to talk more about like um, my family history like my past like she wanted to dig into my feelings and emotions and my memories to try and find out what caused my anxiety the, the reason behind why I was the way I was um, and I found that really really difficult um it and they always say that like therapy is hard it's like it's not easy at all and they always tell you it does get worse before it gets better but after going in like every week and, and talking about like things that have happened in my past and that I just kind of felt like I was c coming out feeling shitter every time like it wasn't working so I stopped that and I went to another therapist who specialized in cognitive behavioral therapy um which is more of a case like she she didn't care why i had anxiety she didn't want to know about my past or where this had come from it was more of a case of you have anxiety let's deal with it um so yeah that was like retraining my brain into thinking different ways and uh, again we went back to lots of different breathing techniques kind of physical things and obviously mental things that i could do day to day that would um, help with that um, and that I found worked a lot better. I kind of started using like mindfulness and meditation and stuff um, and yeah just like every day I used to do it on the bus as well because I always get nervous about getting the bus and I would just sit on my phone with my headphones in and I'd do my breathing and like don't know just anything to like ground myself I'd do this little thing and it sounds really silly but like I would sit there and I'd have to find five things that I can see around me and name them in my head to like go through it properly in my head um as if I was talking to myself so five things that I could see four things that I could hear three things that I could touch two things that I could smell and one thing that I could taste and just like little things like that like they take you out of your head and they put you back like in the room kind of thing um, so that was always good now it's a little bit different now I'm kind of like not in that place anymore I still have anxiety I have day-to-day -day anxiety but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be so whereas before a lot of people used to say to me like shake it off like pull yourself together it's fine and when you're in like a really bad state of anxiety that's probably the worst thing someone could say to you because you you just want to scream at them and just say like this you can't just shake this off like whereas now i kind of i say that to myself i wake up in the morning and i'm already feeling about anxious about something i talk to myself i'm just like pull yourself together Marla. it's fine and yeah, just by being in a better place now, I can do that. I can shake it off and I can like get through it. So it's just getting through the shit patch. Like once you're out of that, like you know that like nothing, nothing else worse than that can happen. Like that is probably the worst place that you could be in. So you can say to yourself every day, like, what's the worst that can happen? You've been through it. Like it's fine. So that actually going through that has helped me more than anything else now because like you're not scared of it anymore I feel like the worst thing with anxiety is always being frightened of being frightened whereas 